Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at using the sequencer. So I have a new level here. I'm going to go into cinematics and add a level sequence. We'll call this my first sequence. All right, great. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is set up my cameras. So I'm going to bring a new camera into the scene. All right, and we should give it something to look at. So let's go ahead and find, that's good. Bring in a shape and we'll give this a material. I, that's fun. All right, and we can see that. Let's make it a little bit bigger, good. And maybe a little closer. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead in my sequencer, add a track and I'm going to do the camera cut track. And once I have my camera cuts, I'm gonna add my camera. Another thing I like to do right away is, so this is showing us the timeline in terms of frames, but that's not how my brain thinks. So I'm gonna show time as seconds and I'm gonna make this just a little bit longer. And we'll bring that out. Okay, so our sequencer is automatically added to our world outline there. However, it does not automatically start when we hit play. So I wanna check off auto play and hit save. And I'm gonna hit play and there we go. Now you'll notice the sphere, we talked about this in an earlier video, it is the player start. And as a bit of a hack here, I'm just going to tuck it under the floor. Okay, great. So I hit play, I have my scene, I have my camera, awesome. What else we can do? We can bring in another camera. So in an earlier video, which I'll link in the description, we created this blueprint, which has a cube and a camera attached to it. So in my sequencer, let's say, I don't know, four seconds, we'll do three seconds in. So I'm gonna go to three seconds. I'm gonna add this blueprint camera. So I'm gonna go from this camera right here to this camera right here. All right, great, let's try that out. So I'm gonna hit play. One, two, three, and then I switch to this camera. And it'd be a little more interesting if this was facing my scene. So we turn that around. Okay, great. Now there's a lot we can still do with sequencer. So for example, under track, I can add different actors. So I can add in my cone and you'll notice it gives me this transform. So if I go to time zero, I'm gonna give it a keyframe. So this is gonna say at time zero, this is where I want the location, rotation and scale. And then we'll say at time six, punch that in. I want this to be this much higher and we'll punch in a new keyframe, great. So now, during my scene, my cone is going to rise into the air. Now, I could also accomplish that with a blueprint, but I find if you're doing very simple transforms that using sequencer is easier, where if you wanna do a more complicated movement, for example, this blueprint has the cube and the camera attached, both moving simultaneously, and it's moving every single frame, I find using a blueprint is easier, but that is your choice. Okay, so just to remember, I hit play, the cone's rising, I'm looking here, and then I switch cameras to this blueprint camera. Okay, great. I can also manipulate my lights with this. So I can click on light and I'm gonna bring in a point light and I'm gonna put it right in between my camera and let me 
move this a little bit right in between my camera and my cone. Yeah. So I'm gonna add that actor to my sequencer. So I'm gonna add my point light. And again, I can add keyframes on the intensity. I could also add keyframes on the light color. So at zero, I'm gonna bring down the intensity to zero. So there's no light at all. And we'll add a keyframe. And then, sure, why not? Six seconds in, we're gonna add another keyframe and we'll make this, I don't know, 40. It's pretty bright. So over time, my cone is gonna rise and this light is gonna increase its intensity. Okay, great, let's give that a shot. All right, looks pretty good. Now, the last thing here is I want to render this as a movie because I think I have achieved next level artistry and that the MoMA will be calling me any day now. So I'm going to render this movie. You can either render it to a video or an image frame sequence. I'm going to highly recommend that you do the PNG. This is gonna give you the highest quality. It would be easier just to make a video sequence, but trust me, you really wanna use the PNG. In my render movie settings, I have some options here. So this particular file has no audio, frame rate 30 frames per second is fine with me. You can set your resolution, but this seems pretty good. Compression quality, again, I recommend doing 100. That's gonna give you the highest quality output. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say capture movie. And then I'm gonna open up my capture folder, which is inside my project saved video captures. And now I have a sequence of PNGs representing my 10 second film. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to stitch all of these PNGs together with FFmpeg.